Okay, hello. Thank you for waiting. Well, I'm Jimena. I'm a software engineer from Argentina. And hello, everyone. Marcos here. And we're here to tell you my story of how I learned Docker through participating on Docker Hackathon from last year. So it began last year when I started with a personal project with a friend of mine. We were building a web application for brainstorming about a, among uh, distributed teams. And we wanted to use lots of new technologies. We, are, we were using AngularJS, Node.js, uh, MongoDB, and we, we wanted a very full stack technology. So uh, the most important thing we wanted to make as tidy as possible was shipping um, software from development to production and also uh, making consistent development environments. So we asked Marcos and Jonas, who is there, um, how we could do this in a very uh, optimal way and an easy way. And they suggested using Docker. The problem was that neither my friend nor I knew Docker at that moment. So we had to start learning. And by learning Docker, uh, I, the first thing I did was Google what Docker was. So a huge, huge list of things appeared. There were lots of courses, lots of blog posts and presentations. So I freaked out. I thought I couldn't be uh, learning Docker and applying it to my project in a, in a way I could finish it in somehow. So I went directly to Docker's official documentation and I found it very easy and interesting. And there were lots of examples and tutorials. Now you can use something you already know. I think you already know it's play with Docker. And I believe that using Docker's documentation was very interesting and easygoing. So well, I implemented in my project Docker. And by that time, uh, Marcos and Jonas were willing to participate in Docker's hackathon, but they didn't have any project to, to, to go through it, right? So um, I went there with a question. I, have a, I was met playing with Docker Swarm, and I messed it up. And I wanted to know if there was a way I could uh, prevent those errors from happening. Uh, me as a developer, as you all are, or maybe you are, uh, are used to versioning um, tools which have some uh, easy way of knowing which are the incoming changes and what, what is going to happen with what you are promoting to production. And they told me that I didn't have that tool with Docker Swarm. And at that moment, there was no uh, health check and no rollback. So they say, OK, let's do a tool to, um, to help users manage those DAB files as if they were um, the service bl blueprint and present this for the Docker Hackathon. And so we did. We went there with our Wellprint project. And we started the hacking process. It was very interesting, and so in, I was so enthusiastic with that. Um, as I was not a Go programmer and was very little experience with Docker, I, uh, I was assigned the usability and UX experience tasks. I designed what the, the tool was going to be used. And I also helped with testing. The Docker captains directly went to um, the Docker source code. They also found some um, bugs. They fixed them. They, that gave us extra points, so it was great. And well, this is a Wellprint scratch. I did to design what the tool was going to be used and how what it was going to be like. As you can see, we thought that using a color reference in order to differentiate between uh, so the changes and the um, the, yes, the, the incoming changes, the modifications, the deletions, was going to be useful for, for the user. We also thought that arranging the information into columns was going to be tidier and easier to read. And another thing we thought it was going to be useful was to decide which changes were going to be applied in the new version of our Docker Swarm. So we made 
this feature also possible for our tool. We also included some other extra features that was to export the current swarm configuration um, to output the service public port to destroy, destroy, I, sorry, destroy the swarm services as needed and manage multiple stacks at once. So here is our first MVP. Um, as you can see there, uh, in orange, you can see uh, the modifications that were going to be applied in the new Docker Swarm. Uh, you can see the information arranged in columns and a total new uh, service in green. So well, we thought it was completed, we submitted it, and as the title of this session already is spoiled. We won the hackathon. We were so happy to do that <laughs> and to participate, yeah. Um, and before going to the demo of this project, I want to sum up some important things to take into account when participating in hackathons. I believe that focusing on an MVP is very important because when you first start with a project, you have so many ideas and you want to implement them all. And maybe just going through all of them makes you lose your focus and you end up with no project to, to, to promote. It is important too to take into account which is the final user of your, your application or your tool. It is important to make it understandable, easily configurable, and self-explained. And um, in our case, it was super important to go through Docker source code because, well, I already told you. And the most important thing is to have fun because it's something amazing. It's an amazing experience. So the important thing is to enjoy it. So well, I leave you with Marcos, who is going to do the demo. Okay, thank you, Jimena. So I'm going to show you a quick uh, demo about our hack. So I'm pretty sure that you must know Docker Swarm by this time. So we started this when Docker Swarm was just released in 1.12. So imagine that you need to deploy a stack to production, right? So you need to know what's going to happen in your Swarm cluster. So with Wellprint, you can do Wellprint plan. And you're gonna get an output plan of what's going to happen in that Swarm, basically. As you can see in this output, uh, everything that's green is a new service that is going to be created, and then you can see everything that is going to happen. So, uh, for instance, I'm not going to have a, a TTI. Uh, I'm going to have two replicas. Uh, the the endpoint spec mode is going to be BIP. Uh, so this is pretty useful, right? Because you can understand what is going to happen if you deploy this uh, this service. One thing that I didn't mention is the fact that we have two stack files in this directory. I have a simple file which is just uh, an example with an Nginx and the memcache service. And I have the other one, which is the, the voting stack, which is like a much complex application. The good thing about Wellprint is that it basically parses all the stack files that your directory contains, and it just outputs them all, or you can actually uh, specify just one stack. So I can do Wellprint plan, and I can do simple, and it will just output the plan of that simple stack, or I can do the other way with the voting and I can get the voting stack only. But uh, not only showing this, you, you this uh, uh, deployment plan, you can actually uh, deploy it with Wellprint. So you can do Wellprint apply. I'm going to de deploy a stack now. So this is actually doing pretty much the same thing that Docker stack deployed us. But you have the benefit that if I do a plan now, you're gonna see that there's nothing left to do because everything is deployed and everything is updated in my swarm. So if I do Docker service LS, Everything is deployed, it's running, like you would do with Docker stack deploy. But one thing that you usually do, and I'm sure when you have like a, a peak of traffic or many users coming to your platform, you could do like Docker service update and you're gonna select the service, like voting vote uh, equals five, Docker service typo. And now voting vote, uh, voting, I think I have a typo here. Let me check it, Docker service less, Docker service update. Ah, it's a scale, sorry. 
Docker service scale. Thanks, Alex. Alex. There we go. So now if you do Docker service LS, my service scale to file like you would do in your cluster. But what happens now if you do a Docker stack update with the previous stack that you have before? Your service is going to scale down back to two, right? Because that's the initial value that I had. So if I don't modify my stack file and I mess around with my swarm in production and then I try to make an update, you might have a lot of undesired results. With whale print, if I do whale print plan uh, voting, you can see now that you're going to get an execution plan of what's going to happen in your swarm. So basically, your service is going to go back to that to two. So that this is very useful. Uh, and of course, I can do I can just apply whale print apply voting, and it will bring back my service to two. But let's do something a little bit more complex to show you another feature of whale print. So you can let's let's modify this. Uh, stack file, the voting one, and uh, let's gonna change, for instance, the replicas to two, and I'm going to uh, change uh, an image here, the Postgres image. I'm going to change it to just Postgres 9.4, and I'm going to do whale print plan one more time. You're gonna see that I have two changes now because I changed two different services. But as we as developers, sometimes we don't want to just update everything at once because many different things might happen in the, in the swarm if I do everything just at one time. What WellPrint allows to do is I can apply and I can specify only one target of the services that I'm updating, which is pretty cool. So if I just uh, select the target uh, option and I do, okay, I want to just update the voting result thing, this will only update the vote, the vote service but if I do the plan again, it will tell me that the DB service hasn't been up updated. So I can just, you know, do atomic changes whenever I need, and then I could execute a, a run an execution plan and see what's what's happening in my form. Uh, what else do you have? Uh, you can do you can do uh, the outputs basically. Uh, another feature which is pretty useful that uh, Jimena mentioned is that if you deploy a service in a swarm. Uh, and you publish a port without specifying the port in your local machine, you're going to get a random port from 30,000 on top. And if you want to know that port, you need to like query the swarm and read the JSON and all that stuff, or find a way to do it uh, with uh, filters. Uh, but here, with a well print, you just have it right away. You can do well print output, and you get all the ports there, which is pretty cool. And uh, the last feature that is uh, super useful is the fact that you can export, if you do well print export, you can actually export all the services of your current running swarm if you don't have a stack. And you can take that export and maybe apply that swarm in a staging environment. Or if you want to replicate your whole environment, you can just do it with uh, two commands. Thank you. If there's any questions, please, uh, you can come to us and uh, ask us whatever you need.